Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Be Well with Michelle Greenwell. Today, I'm just going to take the stage myself, and I want to share some ideas with you about creating a bioenergetic um, wellness day. And that means making choices and taking opportunities that always is lifting you up. So a lot of times what happens in our day is we spend our time um, reflecting or responding to what is happening of the needs of others around us and also to the demands of our day and often to that to-do list, right? The things you want to get done for the day. And so I'm going to suggest some very different ideas today in this podcast that may have you thinking differently about how you want to put your day together and how you want to celebrate who you are and the gifts that you bring to the world every day. So as we do this, I'm going to share more about tea, about the card decks, about the bioenergetic wellness formula that comes from my dissertation. And I just want you to have a chance to be balanced, to feel the flow of energy, to feel the vitality that comes from just thinking in this way. And I want to give you an experience that I hope you can take forward in your day. You're listening to Be Well with Michelle Greenwell, and here we go. All right, so let's get started. I always start the podcast by um, bringing in a couple of concepts. I do this on purpose. First is what is our goal? So our goal today is really to look at how can you bring bioenergetic wellness tools to your day? How can you be bioenergetic? That means how can you be making choices that lift you up and that continue to build and cultivate energy in you all day? So that's our goal for today. Always want to know what our intention is. And then we want to set it in motion. Now in motion for me usually means some kind of movement. So for me, I'll start my day with some Tai Chi movements, or maybe I'll put some music on and dance, um, but always trying to activate within me the um, movement patterns that move my shoulder seams and my hip seams so that there's an activation and uh, that goes back to the brain and starts to really feed the brain. That's really important. So some people will um, start with water, which I also do start with. And then they also may go to a jolt of caffeine in some capacity, whether that's a black tea or a coffee. And that's going to actually put a jolt into the system. So I'm going to make a suggestion to you. Think about bioenergetic activities that bring balance and flow first. Then move on to the things that may change the system, but you've already taken care of the systems. So today, what I wanted to do is introduce um, one of the teas that I chose for today. Um, this one is a chai tea, um, and I've put it in this beautiful tulip cup. I know we're January um, as I'm talking now, so we're into snow, but I wanted to bring about a little bit of spring and also the colors that are going to come from that. So for those people listening to the podcast, my mug is yellow. It has uh, red tulips. It's got little butterflies on it. And we've got the green from the leaves. I wanted to share a little bit about the tea. So my company, Cape Breton Tea, um, dot CA, so the Cape Breton Tea Company, has many different kinds of blends. They cater to different um, outcomes that you'd like because of the different ingredients that are in it. But there's a couple of other things that go with it. So we have layers of intention. And so the intention for today um, on the front of my, my Mo River chai package. All right, so I'm just holding that up to the screen for those on podcast. So this is meet the light of transformation with this golden brew. So as we've come into the new year, lots of people working on resolutions, intention, manifestation, etc. This is the way I like to start my day, choosing an intention that really ignites what my day is about, not the to do list, but the, the quality that I want to be um, exploring my day with. Okay, so meet the light of transformation with this golden brew. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a sip 
and I'm going to recommend if you've got some water or tea where you are while you're listening to this podcast that we cheers to each other and thank you for coming and listening to some of these new ideas. Here we go. Oh, I just, when I connected with the herbs and the tea, oh, it just brought about so much for me. Each herb that goes into the tea blend has its own components, it has, it has its medicinal qualities, and we can talk about those, but it also has an essence. It has a way that it lifts you up, and that's what I love about playing with herbs. I'm going to call it that because they really do have um, a lightness, a personality. Um, when people ask me about which is your favorite tea blend or what's this tea like to drink, um, sometimes my description is it makes me smile. And the reason I say things like that is because, yes, I could target an acre of complaint in my body. I have a headache or I've got uh, extra fluid on my, in my joints. But then I'm just trying to tell the herb where it needs to go. And I would rather say, you know, hello herb. <laughs> what are the pieces that you want to bring to me and where can you bring joy? into my day and how can you bring it into my body and it can be that it could target the area that is giving me a complaint but maybe it's going to target somewhere else maybe it's going to be just the whole overall vibrancy that's going to lift me up and so it's important for me to acknowledge that there's this this piece of the herbs that isn't really about us at all but it, it, it's really about the herb itself and so I like to take time to be a part of that Okay, so in the teas, we've got layers of intention. So we have that essence of the herb on its own, but then we have the relationships of the herbs as they go together. So in a compilation that might have 10 different ingredients in it, you can imagine what gets added to it. So let's just take this tea as an example. So it is a black tea. It's got honey bush, ginger, cinnamon, cardamom, black and white pepper, clove, nutmeg, rose petals, rooibos, safflower petals, strawberry and blackberry leaves, strawberry pieces, goldenrod, and black-eyed Susan petals. There's a lot of ingredients in there. So when you start to look at what are the qualities of each of those, and then what's the relationship that they have with each other, it becomes really, really interesting. The part that I enjoy the most is the things that I can grow in my garden that get added into these teas. So there's things like black tea that, that does have to come from India or China, um, does come from other places in the world. But then we have these other pieces that are right from the garden, but they're coming in in a compilation because a lot of times people will go to the garden too and they'll, they'll pull the herb out of the garden and they'll focus in. I'm going to have this herb because it's good for. And the tea might taste good, might not have much taste to it at all. That happens a lot of times with herbal teas. But what we've really focused on within the company is making sure these tea blends have really good flavors. They're good hot, they're good cold. So you can have them at any time and you can, you can have that combination of herb lifting you up. So as you're thinking about the, what I just described to you, I'm hoping you can start to feel the vibrancy. So we had the herb itself, we had the combination of the herbs, and then we have the intentions. So the intentions brought into the package, the intention could be the written word, but you also have the picture that I've attached on it, and that's bringing uh, one of the herb qualities forward. And then you also have the picture that comes through on the package. So I can look at these herbs, when I go to make the tea, I can hold them in the palm of my hand, and I can really connect in with the herbs as a combination. So that's one way that I like to really lift things up. And it's easy. You don't have to do too much with it. It's a part of my regular routine. I make tea throughout the day. I often forget to drink it when it's hot. Um, so I'm very often I'm drinking it warm or cold. And so that's why the tea has to be something that's going to taste good no matter what way I'm going to have it because very often it is going to be cold. And this is a great way for me to bring micronutrients in to lift me up and to really feel vibrant through the day. So that's one of my 
bioenergetic activities that I participate in. Okay, so let's look at the bioenergetic wellness formula. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to pull out the cards that come from the card deck. I'm just going to hold this up so those people on the podcast, I'm going to say it out loud. The, it's in the card. It's in the cards deck. So this one has on the front of it, it has an image that we've created, which is really about playfulness. And so for those listening, it, it looks like a tree trunk, but it's multicolored and it has little dots or orbs on it. So all the guides that you have, the wisdom that comes with you, the experience that you have, that's all part of the vision of what's on the card. And then there's also a wheel. So you know from my previous podcast, I talk a lot about the five element wheel and whether you're in a nurturing cycle, which goes fire, earth, metal, water, wood, or whether you're in a controlling or destructive cycle where you're changing patterns, transforming. And that's when we go into, um, it's what's called the shape of the star. So if you're, you go from the fire, you go down to the metal, you go across to wood, then you go over to earth and come back to water and then finish up at fire again. And then that becomes relationships. Um, what is the relationship between things similar to what I described about the tea? Okay, so I created in this deck compass cards. I say I. <laughs> there were three of us that worked on this card deck, but this is one section that I worked on because this is this comes from my dissertation. So what I'm going to share with you are the five pieces that I feel are really important beyond biofeedback, so getting information from the body. Um, these are pieces that I include in this podcast all the time. I also include it all the way through my day. And this is how I continue the bioenergetic lifting that can help uh, sustain and support all that I'm doing. So I can have in my compass card, I can have goal setting. And we did that already. Uh, We did it with intention, which is the second card, because there is a difference between goal setting and intention. So I'm just holding up the different cards here. All right. So intention is um, how you would like it to be the quality, the feel, the expression, um, the outcome, the intended outcome that you want at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, I want to be vibrant and full of energy. I don't want to be uh, dragging myself over to the couch and collapsing to binge watch (laughs) some new program on, on the TV. So what I really want to be is energetically lifted when I finish my day. So that could be my intention and my quality could be, I want to easily and joyfully do something. I want to be full of love. I want to be compassionate today. Um, I want to have a high creativity day um, because I'm working on a new project, something like that. My goals could be like my to-do list that I'm going to accomplish some things in certain areas. I'm going to maybe get some specific tasks done because we do need to have a to-do list. But I'm also going to leave it flexible enough that the intuition, which is another part of the cards here. So I'm just going to bring that one forward. So just holding this one up. So it's a little bear that's got a big circle around uh, his head and um, a heart in the center. And this is about listening to who you are, what you need, knowing where your intention is, where you want to go. And then being open to the guidance that comes from your knowing, but maybe the guides that support you as well. And sometimes those ideas just pop into your head or people start coming to you through the day that are giving you information that you needed, but you didn't know you were missing. And that's where I like to be really open to intuition because that helps me respond in a much better way information comes in it pulls me sometimes in different directions and it looks like I'm in chaos but I eventually get around to finishing off what was on that goal list or the to-do list but it came in with more information and more inspiration than I could have provided based on what I knew and so I like to leave that space open so that's the intuition part Now, in order to create that, you need to have awareness. So this is the other card. And awareness can be how you're feeling. And you could be working on a project 
and it's not feeling right. It's not feeling like you can finish it right now, but it's on your to do list. And so you could push through and it could take you four hours to get it done, but you get it done, but it's going to be kind of painful. So you have to push through that. Now that would be bioacidic because that means it's going to be taking energy from you rather than building energy up. So when I notice that there's this little push this resistance piece, I back right up. If the agenda is not for me at this moment, then I need to let it go and I need to move myself in a way that's open to receive the information that's still needing to come in. So this comes through awareness and the awareness today, what we're going to do is play around with the census cards just to, to build a little bit of awareness. Okay. Um, awareness can also be, so I talked about what does it feel like inside. Awareness can be where you start to notice tension. You could start to notice your words. Um, maybe the way you say things or the way you think, those pieces might come in. So just starting to really pay attention to the cues that are coming towards you, but you might not have been listening to them because you were too busy with the to-do list. Okay, and the last one is creating community. Now, for those people that are on my distribution list um, who went to my website, dancedebut.com, and asked for the PDF of the top eight stress releasers, you went on to an email distribution list. And that allows me the opportunity to share with you some ideas, opportunities coming up, and collaborations that are happening. So my theme for all of 2023 had been about collaborations. I didn't tell people that, but I reached out in many different ways to find out how I could have different relationships with people. Uh, I worked with people globally around the world. I also went into different genres, so not just the people in my field. I tried to pull myself out of uh, the movement-based activities where I love to, to spend my time and play, and I, I tried to reach out into what were some of the inspirations and some of the backgrounds of people that I didn't know things about or that I could be interested in. And so that creating community allowed me the opportunity to connect. When we connect with people, it instigates our innate healing potential. And it does because we have already set the intention at the start of the day for bioenergetic support. We're looking for that bioenergetic wellness. And so by saying, here's what my goal is, here's what my intended outcome, here's where I wanna be traveling today, I set it up already for that healing potential. Now, every relationship I have is nurturing that potential. And that's how we get the enzymes in the body to start the transition into healing rather than energy depletion because we're just sending the energy out trying to get those things done. Okay, that's a lot of information. So I hope that you've been able to take it in. So that's part of the formula that I work with every day and also what is in every podcast and making sure those components are always building you up. When I have a guest on, there's the engagement with somebody new and our intention is already set so the innate healing potential can be activated. Okay, so let's go to the other deck that I often pull a card from when I'm uh, starting with one of my guests. So this is the affirmations for the body and biofield deck. Now, if these two decks appeal to you, they are on my website, dancedebut.com. If you go into the shop, click on merchandise and go to page two. And it sounds terrible to say page two, but that's where it's located. Um, there's lots of great resources in the shop. And so um, those two card decks sit on page two. Now this deck has four different decks in it. And sometimes I want to pull a card that comes from a specific spot. So I've got affirmations for the spine, the relationship of each vertebra in the spine. And I might want to be playing play around with some components in the spine. I might want to play with the fascia that comes off the spine and goes out to other tissue in the body. That's a different deck. I might want to go to the joints in the body, the spaces. And when we get tension, those spaces close up. But when we're building energy, the spaces open. So I may decide I want to go into a joint. 
And then the fourth deck has to do with all the different energy areas. I'll call it that. So it could be meridians, could be um, the elements. So you've heard me talk about both of those before. Could be the auric field, what happens out in the bio field. Could be the duntians from Tai Chi, lower, middle, upper duntian. Could be the chakras. So everybody has different ways they like to think about energy and move through energy and play with it. So that's all included within the deck. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have them all compiled into one one deck and I'm just going to tap this deck because it's for us, those of us that are listening and participating in this uh, podcast. And so the activation card for us today, this one comes from meeting the divine. All right, so this has to do with the energy, building the energy, and it's middle duntian. So middle duntian is that heart center, how you come from your passion within, how you connect with other people. So it says, I'll give you the picture as well. So those people listening, this one is the one, it kind of looks like roses um, because it's got petals on it, Um, but the petals are stacked in these layers and right in the center looks like a little kind of heart opening and budding and at the bottom is green like a stem but it also has this tiny little bit of of red right in the center and so as we talked about this being middle duntian this can represent that centered heart piece so breathe in let your inner core energy soften into the subtle energy of your body Allow your energies to flow. Surrender to the inner knowing that speaks tenderly in your ear and with your heart. Seek gentle awareness, becoming and enfolding. This really ties into today, doesn't it? So when I play with this deck, it always gives me a message that makes uh, me stop to listen Um, to engage and to reframe because I can get going on my to-do lists um, and I can lose track. I lose track of time a lot, but I can really lose track of where I'm going and that intended outcome. And these cards really pull me back and allow me the opportunity to bring, bring back that centeredness. Now, the best way to engage with it is the words that I read to you, which are on the back of the card, are infused with other energy related to middle duntian within the the picture. So this picture I could put on my fridge if I was going to be in the kitchen a fair bit today. I could put it next to my computer. I could sit on it, could put underneath my feet. I could put it as a coaster and put it underneath my tea if I wanted. Any way that I can engage with the energy that's found within this card can be a way that I can continue to support myself through the day. All right, so this card deck, well, both card decks are actually sit on my desk and I'm active with them both throughout the day. And if I need a little pick me up, all I need to do is pull one card and away I go. Sometimes I'll pull more. All right, so I promised you some activities today because we want to do some bioenergetic lifting. All right, I did talk about bioacidic a little bit but I should probably suggest another idea too, which is bio-neutral. So bio-neutral are those activities which um, don't add any energy to you, but they also don't take any energy away. So those can be just the regular kind of activities like going to the mailbox to pick up the mail or um, uh, let me see, reading reading something in the news or uh, opening your book. Uh, and and reading an excerpt from it, it could be just bio neutral, it just supports you in your day, it's just regular activities doing the dishes. But then we have this bio acidic piece, those are activities we do that take energy away from us. For those people that maybe like to do workouts, you can do workouts, which can be energy building. So when you finish working out, you feel really good, you're lifted and you're like, I can conquer the world. But some people will work overabundantly. I don't, I don't know any people like that in my life. <laughs> That's not me, overabundant. Um, 
but what happens is they they go beyond their energy level and they're exhausted at the end of that workout some people know it know it as going into the garden and you get going in the garden and it's why well, I, I just want to finish this i just want to do one more piece because then it's done and you just keep going but when you're finished you're just so tired that time you put into finishing that project depleted your energy so now you're just going to have to rest and you're going to think about resting as collapsing on that couch having a nap um, watching tv reading a book and that then is going to maybe sustain you but it might not lift you up so that's when bioacidic becomes a problem because you're always draining the energy out in Tai Chi, we talk about the pelvis and the, the bowl of the pelvis and the way that you activate it by rocking and opening and closing. So the hip seam opens and closes. So we do that lots of times by the seated to standing Don Yu. Um, you can find that on my YouTube channel at Michelle Greenwell. If you go into the playlist for Tai Chi wellness, um, you can just scroll down and you'll find the seated to standing Don Yu's. And that is an excellent exercise for cultivating and building energy and that energy gets stored in the lower dantian which is the pelvic bowl um, also known root chakra sacral chakra same area um, it gets stored so that you have energy to work with later which is really cool now if you think about going out into the garden or doing the cleaning in the house as uh, bioenergetic and you start to think about that opening and closing of the hip and how that action is actually building energy that can completely change how you're engaged in your activity and also the outcome, how you're gonna feel when you're finished. That changes it from a bioacidic opportunity to a bioenergetic opportunity. Now, when we make food choices, it's the same thing. Foods can be really good for us, herbs can be good for us, but it's when they're bioenergetic that means they continue to lift us and hold us up or they're bioacidic, meaning that doesn't agree with us. We don't digest it well um, and it drops the energy out of us. So for me, I know that if I have bread, bread is just going to completely drop my energy and that could be a gluten free bread, but it can also be a regular bread. So I have to be careful that when I'm doing activities, if I know that I need my energy to stay up, bread is not my choice. Choose something else. Usually it's vegetables, it's a salad, it's a stir fry, um, then bringing that in to energetically lift me. So even though a food is good for you because of the nutrients that are in it, your body might not respond to it as a good for you. And then it becomes bioacidic because it's going to pull you down. So you just have to be aware of when it's okay for that um, because you have a way to recover from it. So it's an activity that you're gonna be participating in, a um, way that you're connecting with other people, or you combine it with something else that is a lifter that will pull you up regardless. Okay, then you've got that bio-neutral piece. So we have some foods that even though they're good for you, they don't really add much to you, but they don't take anything away either. And so being aware that those ones just kind of leave you kind of sitting in the middle. So when you're making choices, you're always trying to choose those bioenergetic versions. And that's where if I make tea for the day, I'm making sure I have enough hydration. So water is important, but I also like to make sure that I've got those herbs handy because the herbs are going to always be lifting me up. They're going to be giving me this capacity beyond what I could do for myself. So, and that would be a conscious intention piece, which for a lot of people, they try to do with willpower or making the choices, but I can do it through the herbs. Can I have one more sip? Okay, so I promised you some activities. So let's do that. These are the census cards and they come from the It's in the Cards deck. And the census cards are a way for us to get past language and to get into the subconscious um, without having to have the mind make a decision or activate. So a lot of times we go, I'm going to be healthier. So I'm going to do this. And then we have this language going on. 
and we have choices going on. But if we acknowledge and dive into our senses and awaken ourselves up, the choices for bioenergetic wellness become much easier to make. So the card that they recommend, um, the card, <laughs> the card I'm going to recommend, the, the one that I'm going to bring forward is smell. And smell is the one that activates the quickest. So let's dive into it first. So on my census card, this one says face massage. And it has a picture. It's actually a sketch my mom did of my daughter uh, swimming with dolphins. And so this one I love because the connection of the spirituality of the dolphin messaging that come from the dolphin and from our sea creatures. All right, I apologize for that phone. I didn't realize it was here. All right, so this has to do with smell. So we're going to activate the way that we can smell things. And we're going to do it with a face massage. So let's just take the hands together. Just give them a little bit of a rub. All right. And then what I want you to do is, I'm going to take my glasses off. I would like you to take your fingertips into the center, right at the top of the nose. And you're just going to stroke up the nose very gently around the eyebrows to the forehead, down the side of the face, and off the chin. Probably feels lovely. Okay, so let's try it again. So we're gonna go up the center, around, it's like making a heart. When we come off the chin, we just close that heart up. Okay, and let's go one more. And as you do that, what can you smell? Mm, I put some lotion on today, which was like a honey buttermilk, and then instantly I could smell it. Beautiful. And we have instantly gone into the brain and activated awareness. Okay, so let's move over to the ear, hearing. So this one has the, a picture of a beautiful little calf that was born in a farm here. Um, and he was sent to a sanctuary. He was actually um, not, not going to be able to stay on the farm. And so they sent him to a sanctuary because he had this spark in his eye. Um, he just had so much life in him and his eyes just pulled you right in. So he now is actually a cow that um, helps give educational programming to kids about being on the farm and what it's like to exchange with animals and and uh, take care of them all right so let's uh, on that picture it just has a picture of the ears so we're going to activate the ears here so the ear rub you can use same hand as ear if you like or you can take the opposite hand that would give you some brain integration and so I'm going to do same hand as ear for simplicity on the podcast, but if you want to do opposite, that's fine too. And what we want to do is we want to unroll the top of the ear. So where it's folded over, we're just going to unroll it from the top to the bottom. And when we get down to the earlobe, just give it a little bit of a tug. Okay, then we're going to go back up, go a little bit deeper into the ear. So now we're going to pull across the ear towards that outer edge and then down to the bottom. And then the third one, go into the center of the ear and just give some tugging all the way around the opening and down. All right. Now I very often use this with a head turning exercise to show the level of stress that someone might be under. We didn't do that today. We're just activating hearing. This will help you find the beat of the music. This will help take background noise out allow you to focus on the person speaking right in front of you, might allow you to have more acuity to pick up some subtle sounds that you might not have normally heard about. And it inspires the entire body because there's acupressure points all the way through the ears that respond to the rest of the body. So let's go to the other side. So we're gonna unroll. This is really easy to do any time of the day. And it also helps bring you on to the time of day that it is. So if you're a traveler, that might be important. So I'm just looking at what time it is now. And I'm just being aware of that as I'm doing that rub. Okay, so we've got that ear rub. Your ear might have heated up. You might have noticed all of a sudden you have a, a little bit more depth to your hearing. 
Okay, so let's move over to look. So our visuals, how our eyes work. So here I have two horses. Uh, my mom is fantastic at sketching. And so these are actually pencil drawings of two horses. It does look like a photograph. Um, but they're looking at each other, seeing, being aware. Now this, we're gonna use our switches and we can actually move our eyes at the same time. So we're gonna be engaging the dimensions of movement in the body, forward and back, side to side, up and down. And we're going to be engaging the way that our eyes are gonna be tracking. Now you can take more time with this exercise if you want. Today, it's just as an example, but this will give you a way. Now I put my glasses back on, um, but I'm gonna take them back off because my glasses are gonna have edges on them. And so my eyes are only gonna track within the edges of my glasses. So I don't want that. I wanna be able to see as far as I can. All right, so the first one is we're gonna take top of the lip and bottom of the lip, central and governing endpoints. We're just gonna rub them. So I've taken my thumb and my index finger. It's, my index finger's on my top lip and my thumb's on the bottom lip. And I'm going back and forth like I'm brushing my teeth. And my other hand is going to be, we call it the tiger's claw in Tai Chi. It's going to be like a, a curved roundness and my fingers are open so I can have all five points. I'm going to take that like a claw so it's circular. And I'm going to put it over top of my belly button. All right, and I'm just going to rub back and forth. As I do that, I'm also going to track my eyes up and down. I'm just pointing to the top to the bottom of my lip. That's how I remember. So my eyes are going to track from the ceiling to the floor while I'm rubbing those points. And if you find that as you're tracking your eyes up and down slowly, that there's a skip, that tells you where the muscles actually aren't working. They just go from one place to the next and they skip through the center. And what you want to do is you want to slow down in those areas, take some time and just really help the eyes to focus in. Okay, we're going to change hands. As you do this, you might be going up and down right in front of you in the center, but you can also take your eyes a little bit wider and go up and down towards the edges. All right, so that is our switches for up and down, and that is connecting the top half of the body with the bottom half of the body so that there's a conversation in movement that is connected. So now we want to go to the side to side switching. So we have at the collarbone, you've got the hollow of your collarbone, you're just going to slide your fingers down just a little bit and you'll just find two dimples. And it's um, uh, not very wide apart, maybe mm, three fingers width apart. And you're just going to take the thumbs on one side, the fingers are going to be on the other side, you're going to rub both sides at the same time, take that same claw uh, hand and open fingers place those open fingers over top of the area of the belly button all right so in a big circle and your eyes here are going to track side to side and the same as i said before if there's a skip you can always go back and forth through that area smooth it out now you might go back and forth across the center but you could go a little bit higher and it could go a little bit lower as well Okay, so change hands. We're going to go across. All right, and my eyes are tracking side to side for those people listening to the podcast, trying to figure out what they're doing. Okay, and now what we've done is we've connected the right side of the body to the left side of the body and the connection of anything that's going to link or go across. So one side of the body knows what the other side is doing. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, oh, I'm just going to put my glasses on. We're not done with the eyes yet. We're going to go long distance, short distance. We're going to jump back and forth in our looking. We're going to take our hand into a fist and put it at our tailbone. So all across the tailbone area, we're just going to massage there. The other hand is still in that claw shape over the belly button. Okay, and we're going to let our eyes migrate from a long distance look to a short distance where it has to go into finer close up. So I'm able to look out the window and then I'm able to look at the screen. All right, 
This is going to activate the cerebral spinal pump, base of the spine. It also is front and back. So how we um, work with moving back and forth uh, without turning around. So backing up, uh, maybe looking in a mirror, a rear view mirror in the car. That'll be important. Okay, changing hands. So you're going to rub with the fist in the other hand. All right. Perfect. Okay, so that gets us our switches. So now we're going to go to taste. Now this one has a little picture of Bailey the dog and he's got his head kind of turned and that was just a reminder of this is just going to be to open along the edge of the neck. So what I'm there's different ways of stretching and you can hold them as long as you want but for the podcast today I'm just going to suggest them. So the first one is uh, just turning the head and looking to the side and then notice how it feels but you can spend time there and just just notice the tension where it's pulling okay we're going to go across to the other side same thing notice and sense what that feels like okay so i would repeat that at least three times okay then what i would suggest is you take your ear to your shoulder and you may feel along the side of the neck pulling mostly kind of at the base of the neck likely okay and then I'm going to suggest you leaving your ear to your shoulder. You're going to turn your nose up towards the roof or to the sky. And as you do that, you're going to feel the pull come along the side of the neck, right from the ear all the way down the, the uh, side of the neck, coming towards the front of the neck. Our vagus nerve is in that area. This is a great way to release, to soften. So now again, you can hold this for as long as you feel. I like to take my ear back to the shoulder, nose coming down, and then roll my head around, down the back, uh, down chin to the chest, around to the other side. So we're going to stretch on that other side. If you notice that your shoulder wants to rise up, that's extra tension in there. Just remind it it can relax. And then you can take the nose up towards the roof. Notice what that feels like. Definitely. I always I can feel it go right into the inner ear, which is amazing to me in the next stretch. And then the ear is going to go back to the shoulder. And I, to finish, I would roll it down chin to the chest and then a push into the feet to bring the head back up. All right. That one I would repeat several times, at least three times through that whole exercise. You do have the lift and the drop as well with the, the neck. So rather than knocking the head back, which is how we learned it when I was in phys ed many years ago, you're going to put the tongue to the roof of your mouth and you're going to just lift the chin up. So you're not dropping your head back, but you're actually lifting the chin and feeling the stretch come underneath the throat. And then you can drop the chin to the chest. But to do that, bring your head straight and then rotate by lifting the back of the head up. And you'll feel that pull down the back. And you may notice that make a change in what you're feeling down the spine. Bring that back up to center. Okay. So again, I would repeat that about four times. Take your time with it. Okay, so let's go from there to the last card, which is touch. And we did start by rubbing our hands together. We did instigate the touch when we started. But this one, we're going to rub the hands together. And then I want you to feel the energy ball, your potential. So opening the hands, take them about um, shoulder width apart. And then you're just going to take the hands and start to push them towards each other. But you're going to notice, well, I'm noticing my hands are just getting pulled together. And then all of a sudden, you're going to notice when you get to a place where there's a little bit of resistance. And it's just going to stop. And that is where the energy is concentrated. Sometimes my ball is really large. If I've been building energy and the, the biofield, the outer 
the outer field of my body is um, really engaged, then I may notice it to be much bigger. Today, it's a little bit smaller, very concentrated. Okay, I can feel my fingertips starting to tingle. So now you can do lots of things with this energy ball. You can play with it. But what I'm going to suggest today is fill it with color. You could fill it with a rainbow, you could fill it with the sky, the ocean, forest, sand, plants. Just fill that up with things that bring you joy, things that can bring um, something from your heart center. All right. And so I'm starting to feel that. Now you may notice that the hands get pushed apart as it builds. You may notice that it gets pulled in closer. So anything can happen. But now that you've cultivated that, you have a choice. You can leave that to shimmer out in the biofield, or you can pull it into the body. If you pull it into the body, you need to offer rather than give it. What that means is you need to suggest, if you would like this, here it is, rather than I'm going to pull this into my lower duntian. Okay, I'm going to go to the heart center today. I could go to lower duntian below the belly button. I could also go to my third eye. But today, heart center seemed to be the focus, so that's where I'm going to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn my fingers so that my palms are now facing to my heart. And I'm just going to let my body pull that energy in. And I'm just holding my hands to support that. Now, that activity you can take much more time with it and really engage with it if you want. But that gives you an introduction to how you might be able to inspire bioenergetic activity that's going to lift you up and build. All right. It has been quite the episode today sharing with you some of the tips and tools that I like to bring uh, to the table with this podcast but also what I bring into my day every day. I hope you've enjoyed listening. I want to invite you that if these card decks are going to inspire you and support you, then check them out in the shop at dancedebut.com. If you're interested in learning more about the tea, there are stories on the website. Uh, there are links and connections to lots of different resources, um, as well as the descriptions of the tea. Also, and that's at capebretontea.ca. And if you go to my YouTube channel, at Michelle Greenwell, there is a tea playlist. And there I've started to archive some of the relationships of the herbs with each other within the tea blends. And I did the first one with the Mission for Change Community Tea. And that one was such an eye-opener of how it helps you um, with connecting with others, building community, and using that tea as a way to bring a group of people together for a common goal. Um, that one was really, really special to work on. All right. I wish you a very wonderful day, an energy building day. And remember, the choices you make, you want to make for bioenergetic wellness. Bring the best into you and lift yourself up. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to the podcast. This is Be Well with Michelle Greenwell signing off. Take care.